Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Movies. If you are new here, like and subscribe for future content. The anime conventions and the voice actors and this whole industry, is it corrupted or not? This is what we'll be looking at today, mostly due to the Japan Times, who posted an article yesterday in regards to the Me Too allegations, the Vic McNonia allegations, and whether or not people believe them. So, just going through Twitter, I saw Go Shell Zen. She posted this. New. Japan Times article claims that I stand with Vic and YouTubers have been engaging in attacks, provocations, and conspiracy theories. The writer still believes the now debunked stories from the Kikvik side. So much for journalistic research. Pathetic. So, going with all this, I've clicked into the article just to give it a little read and to see what's actually happening. And it does seem to be that they've said that conventions have actually protected these people, the ones who are supposedly sexual predators and everything else. And if that is the case... Then these con, these con runners, they're uh, they're not exactly peachy or smelling of roses. And this article actually paints them that those people are criminals as well, because obviously if they have protected Vic and whoever has been accused of sexual assault or sexual advances, then these people are protecting them for profit, just so they can sell more tickets. And to sell more merchandise. So they would actually become a part of the entire criminal attack, basically. So, going through it. we uh, I'm going to read through it first. And then we're going to uh, try and dissect it. So, the Me Too allegations, Royal US Anime Conventions. So, over the past two months, the Me Too movement breached the American anime convention industry. Most feel it was inevitable. Many say it's about time. The first salvo was fired in mid-January in the form of a Twitter thread accusing veteran American voice actor Vic of homophobia, anti-Semitic behaviour and unwanted sexual contact. Soon, the charges from fans, some of whom claim they were underage at the time of the alleged transgressions, were joined by those from con staff members, professional cosplayers, fellow voice actors and an ex fiance Less than a week after the first tweets dropped, Vic released a public statement rejecting accusations of bigotry, proclaiming the innocence of his intentions, and apologising to anyone who felt violated by his show of gratitude or support. Some Twitter users, including those in the Actors Fan Club, aggressively defended Vic. The hashtags proliferated I Stand With Vic for and Kick Vic against, and now Vic kicks back, anti-against. So, the controversy expanded on the 30th of January when an article appeared on the Anime News Network site, one of the largest English-language industry portals. Its headline, Far From Perfect, was borrowed from Vic's personal apology to his fan club members. Lindsay Loveridge and Managing Interest Editor compiled first-hand accounts mostly anonymous, from a handful of fans and one cosplayer, all of whom felt mistreated, insulted, or physically victimised by Vic's actions. Anne also published photos of the actor embracing young autograph seekers. The article consolidated and legitimised the social media posts. I don't get a lot of great sleep working on these type of stories, Loveridge tells me, recounting the hours of research and the ethical quandaries behind the reporting. You have to almost disconnect emotionally to make sure you're seeing everything from all sides. Within two weeks, two US-based production companies, so we have Rooster Teeth and Funimation, they permanently severed ties with Vic. Ten of his 14 appearances at Future Cons were cancelled or had their invitations withdrawn. He has hired a law firm, obviously we know this because he got t beard to salvage my reputation and my 20-year career in this industry. Hundreds of thousands attended the annual anime conventions that take place across the United States nearly every weekend. Some cons are over two decades old. This is not the first instance of impropriety. So, 
just going by just that first uh, lot of paragraphs, it does go to show that some of these people, uh, like like Goshal Zen said, they're still believing some things of stories that have been debunked. So, and just reading that as well, it does actually seem that this was written before, obviously, well, before it was posted. And before the uh, the old Kikovic stories were debunked. Which means it could have been about a month ago this could have been wrote. And when you look at it, it was the uh, Roland Celts. So when Roland Celts wrote this article, I I really do think it must have been a couple of weeks, maybe a month ago. Because a lot of the stuff included in this has been debunked so far. Obviously, with the, uh, where is it, when this says, you know, the uh, autograph seekers and obviously published photos of everything else. Some of these people have actually come out and said, you've used my photo without, you know, consent and I never said any of this. Which is what people do. You know, the Kick Vic side, they have actually been found out to be photoshopping things, which is kind of sick and it's kind of sad Again, with all of this, we really need to just let them go to court and sort it out. This is exactly what they need. They need it to be done in court, away from everyone and away from the public eye. That way then, then just let the courts come through with whatever they say and then that's just basically it. But say, going back to the article... In recent years, unlicensed photographers taking pictures of scantily clad cosplayers without their permission prompt, prompted the now standard convention hall warning signs, cosplay is not consent. Last spring, one of the organisers of Houston's anime Matsuri publicly apologised for his unwanted sexual advances after former attendees launched a campaign to boycott the con. In October, an anime con regular who hosted game shows at several cons announced his retirement after an alcoholic outburst at his home resulted in his arrest for beating a cat. Wow. But American voice actors, especially those who play roles in popular titles, have become quasi-celebrities at US cons. Pillars of attraction for badge-buying attendees who wait hours in line to pay for an autograph and a selfie with a star. It wasn't always the case. In the late 90s and into the mid-2000s, American voice actors ranked lower on the industry totem. One seasoned US performer, speaking off the record, recalls when they were not even granted guests of honour status and and consigned to giving autographs in hallways outside the main convention centre. Well, first of all, just with that part there, he, he says speaking off the record, but you still go and publish that what they've said. So straight away, you haven't listened to them to say, oh, you know, off the record, blah, blah, blah. Off the record means basically don't write it down or don't print it, you fucking moron. So, going from there, it does go on to say about uh, Ginny McManus, founder of We Run Anime Cons, a private Facebook group for con runners worldwide. And she believes that the Vic Storm marks a day of reckoning for US convention organisers who may be guilty of looking the other way to maximise attendance and profits. If Vic is guilty of what has happened, then yes. These con uh, organisers, they are 100% guilty of looking the other way just to make sure they can get the most out of profits. And, well, that's really it, just to make profit from some people who have gone through this terrible ordeal. You know? It's it's if they have done it and Vic let's like say if Vic is guilty then it's the shit hits the fan. All these con people, all these con organizers, they need to be uh, either debadged or, you know, said that they're no longer allowed to do cons, no longer allowed to organise them and talk to people basically who is in the conventions circle. She goes on to say, previously, rumours of bad behaviour were just substantiated, enough that conventions could look past the ugliness. Or else they were excused by the adoration and, frankly, badge sales shown to the difficult guests by the fans. Those days appear to be over. 
Still, selecting and running background checks on every guest may be too much to ask of convention staff, many of whom work on a partially volunteer basis with neither the time nor resources to conduct thorough screenings. Actually, this day and age, all you really need is your mobile phone. Because with that, you know, you just go on the internet, straight away, find, you know, put in stuff. You can see, you know, you can check up on these people. So it's not exactly uh, difficult, you know. I think most con runners put the con first, says Jim Vowles, former director of guests and industry at Otacon, is it? Otacon, one of the largest East Coast conventions. Nice. Again, being here in the UK, we don't really have, obviously, like the largest East Coast and West Coast sort of conventions. The one that's normally the biggest is either the Wales Comic Con, which is up in Wrexham at the top of Wales, or it's the London Film and Comic Con. Those are normally the biggest ones over here in the UK. But again, no one says it's the West Coast or the East Coast or, you know. They work part-time, so the vetting isn't really going to be as professional as it should be as big companies with teams dedicated to that. So it does it does go on to say a few other things, mostly about, obviously, after a couple of months this has happened and that has happened. But obviously with Roland, these people still believe the stories that are going around stating that with whatever's happening with Vic... Or the stories that the Kick Vic side is saying, that he, which have been debunked by a lot of people on social media, that these people are still believing him. And it's almost, you know, I agree half with this uh, this article, mostly about the convention organisers, because they should really be doing background checks on a lot of these people. If you are new here, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to get the ding. And we'll see you soon.